All right, so we're going to do something a little bit different this week. Um, I haven't really done any type of team builder so far this season. And since Lucian, 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 Lucian Flash, uh, forgive me if I'm butchering the way you pronounce that name. Um, since he's kind of taking his time tonight, um, I guess it's not his fault. I think he has to work. Um, but, you know, since I've got some time on my hands, I think uh, I'm just going to go ahead and put together a little bit of a, you know, presentation if you will about what i'm bringing this week um because it's kind of wacky um pretty much just throwing together some stuff that i thought might be fun you know to kind of try um since you know we're <laughs> kind of just on cruise control so far this season um we've kind of had it pretty easy so far i think we've gotten pretty lucky with some of the, the roles that have gone our way I, I feel like we had to we have to have um in order to be at this point you know we're at the halfway point of the season. Um, this is week four in a week seven season, so it's like technically halfway. Um, but the fact that we haven't lost a single game in any of our sets yet um, just feel it makes me feel a little bit apprehensive or nervous, if you will. Um, you know that something's gonna come down the pike a little bit here. You know things are gonna normalize. You know we got some regression coming. Um, but hopefully not this week because I've talked a little bit of trash. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's, uh, let's get into these wacky sets that I'm, I'm bringing, you know, um, let's see here. Who do we, who do we got here? No, I don't want to, I don't want to take down. Wait, no, no, it's, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, hmm. What if I go to my menu? No. How do I, how do I hit, like, how do I, like, view the summary of these guys here? Do I have to go, like, no, no. No, that's not it. <laughs> come here, go, come here, daddy. Because daddy, oh, oh, Snorlax. Wait, oh my goodness. How do I do this? I feel like there's got to be a way to, like, view the summary of these guys, right? Well, you know what? Let's just let's just go together like this. You know, let's start off with Guz Daddy here, a.k.a. Daddy. Um, you know, kind of proven his worth last week, uh, proving to the rest of the SCDA that uh, he is not to be slept on because he is, as the kids say, thick. And he is able to take a lot of hits. And all he needs is one kill to just kind of snowball. Um, or guzz ball or whatever whatever shape he is. Like dragon, king, lord, ball thing. Oh, hey, buddy. You're so cute when you look at me like that. Um, yeah, he just needs like one kill to just kind of start, you know, claiming kills. Um putting up five kills on the board last week pretty much single-handedly won me the week uh, with the offensive prowess that he showed so this week we're going to run a a life orb set um last week we ran choice band because we didn't really need much more than knockoff or dragon claw but i think we only ended up clicking knockoff um you know it, it did its job so this week we're going to run life orb with uh, a little bit different uh, wide guard, knockoff, dragon claw, and heavy slam. And we're going to go with 228 EVs in the attack with a brave nature. Uh, full special defense um, to try and live. Uh, you, know, you know, his team's got a, Lucian's team has a lot of special attackers. Um, so we're going to try to maximize our special defense and, you know, take as many hits there as we possibly can. Uh, I'm getting sidetracked by uh, he trains bum there. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see how do I zoom out can I zoom out no okay um, and then we have 28 EVs left over that are just going into the defense um, I think the, the theme of this team this week is going to be straight up trick room except for one Pokemon and that one Pokemon is uh, Guzzlord's partner in crime this week honestly uh, Comfy Comfy is going to be a full support set this week. Uh, let me see if I can find her. Where is she? Where is this accessory? There she is. Yeah. 
she is going to uh, do her damage in setting up Guzzlord for easy layups. Uh, what I mean by that is she's running a choice scarf, or wearing a choice scarf, with the triage ability. Uh, she's running Draining Kiss after you, Trick, and Ally Switch. Um, once I noticed that uh, she's able to learn after you in Galar, uh, kind of got me thinking, like, hey, this could be fun. Um, and and I, th I think I'm in a spot where, you know, I can comfortably just kind of experiment or, and play around with things so uh, we're going to play around with uh, choice scarf after you um, we got full HP investment in the IV or in the EVs and then yeah you smile for this camera yeah you got a big week ahead of you don't you girl yeah you do um, so she's going to have full 252 HP EVs and then 252 uh, defense EVs with four in the special attack just because I don't know what else to do with those four HP or with those four uh, EVs. So uh, she's gonna have a bold nature to live as many, you know, physical attacks as she can. Um, I forgot what their team has here. I'm gonna pull it up real quick. So bear with me for a moment. Um, but the idea for this set, for the most part, is just to, <clears throat> like I said, provide easy layups for Guzzlord or Snorlax or Heatran. You know. Um, Choice Scarf after you with those, you know, the base no speed investment for Comfy allows it to outspeed their Thunderous, which is probably their scariest, most threatening Pokemon, um, and their fastest. So with the Choice Scarf, you know, unless they run Choice Scarf on something on their end, um, it's going to be able to outspeed everything on their team um, after and after you. So. Uh, the goal of this obviously is to use after you with Guzzlord turn one and then like claim a kill on Thunderous or uh, Mew or Ndidi uh, or Togekiss or you know, I guess Heavy, Heavy Slam won't claim Togekiss depending on how much bulk they have invested in it um, but it'll at least get it to the point where next turn it's easy it's an easy KO um, or what I could do is you know run Guzzlord uh, next to Rillaboom and then the combination of Fake Out and Heavy Slam does KO the Togekiss, so um, it just kind of depends how the game unfolds. Um, I think for uh, the first lead in this game, for game one this week, I am probably going to go with... Uh, uh, I'm thinking Rillaboom Claydol. Um, and I guess I can touch on their sets next. Um, let's see here, where, where are you guys at? It's Rillaboom, uh, he's kind of doing his own thing, daydreaming. Let's let's talk about Claydol here. This is going to be the first week that Claydol is actually going to shine a little bit. Um, I brought him to one one week, but he didn't really do much. So this week, Claydol is going to be running a, or going to be wearing a uh, Focus Sash uh, with the Levitate ability because he has no other choice. And we're going to run Trick Room, Ice Beam, Earth Power, and Protect. Where did you go? Did you just, like, hide yourself behind these Snorlax? I think you did. You sure did. Um, so yeah, Trick Room, Earth, Earth Power, Ice Beam, Protect. Uh, f pretty much the same uh, treatment as Comfy. Um, or no, not Comfy. Um, well, yeah, close. Uh, we're going full HP investment, full special attack investment with a Quiet Nature. And then the four left order EVs are just going to the defense stat. Um, Claydol isn't really going to be that threatening offensively. But it is going to be... You know, scary enough where it is going to be able to do a large chunk of damage to their Thunderous. And the fact that it's immune to Thunderous' you know, main stabs um, is really nice. Um, I guess it's not really immune to flying, but it is immune to the Thunder. And it's high special, or like it's high defense stats will make the any like flying attack that Thunderous goes for kind of you know null and void. Uh, the Focus Ash, you know will guarantee that Trick Room goes up if it's led next to Rillaboom and I go for a fake out onto something. So that's the idea there. And then once Trick Room's up, you know, things like Heat Train, Snorlax, Guzzlord, they don't need after you, you know, from the Comfy, so they can you know all just kinda do their thing comfortably. So that's Claydol. Um or as we like to call him Yeet. Uh nicknames for this team were uh, handed out by a good buddy of mine, Aku, in a uh, friendly Discord that we have here. Um, <laughs> he's got some some interesting nicknames. We got uh, accessory for Comfy, Daddy for Guzzlord, and Yeet for Claydol so far. Next up, we got Rillaboom, uh, aka Poopity Scoop. 
we're gonna run the assault vest. Um, but I, you know, Rilla Boom is just one of those things where it's like, you know, you could get really fancy, but in doing so, you might kind of just ruin the Pokemon for your team that week. Like, I almost ran Sterile this week, but high horsepower just it brings more to the table. Like, it makes it more offensively, like it puts more pressure on offensively, and that's always very valuable. It's like at the end of the day, you need to do damage to the other team instead of just lower their stats, right? So, um, we're just gonna run, you know, plain and simple, but very effective. Fake out, U-turn, Grassy Glide, and High Horsepower with the Grassy Surge ability, holding the Assault Vest, and then full HP investment with a Brave Nature and zero speed, e speed IVs uh, with a full attack investment and then four EVs into the Special Defense. The idea here is that I'm hoping that Lucian um, <laughs> is kind of just you know, daydreaming a little bit with his Ndidi set. Um, you know, on the ladder, you don't really... I don't know, like, I never really built a team with Ndidi, so I don't know, like, what the what the main, like, game plan is there. Like, do you really go min speed and zero IVs with that or not? Like, I feel like it would make sense, especially if it's, like, a Trick Room-oriented team, but, you know, I don't know. I don't know if people really, you know, plan on that. Um, if they don't, they probably should, should, because, uh, I'm about to expose that mindset. Um... And DD's Psychic Surge can kind of be a bit problematic, especially with Gorilla Boom wanting to go for Fake Out. Um, since that's like, you know, a lot of what Gorilla Boom brings to the table is that Fake Out uh, support. You know, it's buying somebody like uh, Snorlax a free turn to set up a Belly Drum. Or, you know, Claydol being able to guarantee that it gets up Trick Room. Um, I'm hoping that Gorilla Boom is going to underspeed in DD so that way when. You know, if they re if they lead NDD while I lead Rillaboom, Rillaboom's terrain is going to be the one that stands at the end of the day. Like, if NDD sets it first, then Rillaboom sets it second, and then it's the second terrain that stays. So, uh, that's the idea with Poopity Scoop this week. <clears throat> uh, who do we got next? Uh, we've got Handicapped, a.k.a. Where is he? There he is, the lovely heat train, just out there, you know, doing his own thing in the rain. Um, looks like he's kind of enjoying his time here, and just kind of chilling, you know, not really too scared of the rain. Um, good thing my opponent doesn't have rain this week. Uh, he might be having a little bit of second thoughts. Um, maybe he's a little more comfortable this week because we kind of dusted the rain team last week. So this week we got a Chapelberry uh, that he's holding um, with the flash fire ability. And so one thing I want to note here is that Lucian has a ditto and so that makes team building a little bit um, you know a little more complex because you don't want to give your Pokemon too many things like you know if they copy this well then you just lose right so if they end up copying the heat train well heat train has flash fire so they can't just go for fire attacks so then really boom is pretty much free into it unless heat train is gone right um, you know if they they copy the Guzzlord. Well, they have Heavy Slam. I almost went for uh, Babiri Berry on my Comfy, but I think the After You Choice Scarf kind of uh, prevailed in my my scales in my head uh, in terms of coolness. So um, I said no to that. But um, you know, it's just one of those things that we're like it. It kind of adds a different element of complexity to the team building table here this week. So uh, we're gonna go with the Chapel Berry, uh, Flash Fire. Um, otherwise, had they not had a Ditto. Uh, they don't really have any fire types on their team to really threaten it, so I would have just gone for the flame body on the off chance that their thunderous, which I am anticipating to be defiant, goes for a physical attack onto the heat train, and then I could po possibly burn it. Um, the reason I'm anticipating their thunderous to be defiant is because I brought intimidate luxray to every game so far, uh, and it's it's been a big part to my success uh, with his ability to, you know, put on a lot of pressure offensively with this 120 attack stat, and then you know add to my team's physical bulk with the Intimidate support, so, um, plus it adds Snarl, so, I mean, it, it just, it adds to my team's overall natural bulk, so, I think they're going to lead, Defi or they're going to bring Defiant Thunderous to kind of, you know, try to punish that, um, but unfortunately for them, unfortunately for them, hopefully, uh, you know, when they bring, if they bring it, they won't see the, the Luxray and kind of, uh, make them second guess a little bit, uh, in Team Preview. Um, <clears throat> but the attacks we're running are Heat Wave, Flash Cannon, Earth Power, and Protect. And we're going to throw 244 HP EVs, or EVs into, H into HP, excuse me. 
236 into special attack, 28 into special defense, and we're going to run a quiet nature. Uh, again, the theme of this team this week is Trick Room. Um, as the guys kind of pointed out this week, good mons just kind of equate to good teams. And it doesn't really matter that this team is really hard Trick Room. Like, it's got its priority users, um, Real Boom and Comfy, and, you know, it's got its speed tactics, like, Choice Scarf after you. It's a little bit unorthodox, but it works, right? Um, you know, yeah, hey, cutie. <laughs> we're just, uh, you know, we're just going to roll with it. So Trick Room all the way. Uh, one thing I want to point out is the 28 Special Defense EVs. Um, I forget what Kalka was. I think it was the Seismic Toad. They do have a Seismic Toad, and if it was special with Earth Power... Um, and I don't remember, I think it was like if they had full special attack investment with the Timid Nature. The Earth Power, it like, I was kind of crazy, like once I hit this 28 EV mark on the on the special defense, it went from a guaranteed KO, or a, a chance to KO, at like, you know, maxing out at like 103.8. It went down to like 98, uh, once I transitioned from the, the, two on, the 20 special defense to the 28 special defense, so I... I thought that was that was kind of crazy. That was the, that's the biggest jump that I've I think I've ever seen on like a, an EV transition before. So uh, we're gonna go with that. Um, you know, it could come. Per, you know, it could be pretty handy. Um, we're gonna rely on the grassy surge to uh, you know neuter any potential earthquakes if their assessment toad is physical. But I think it's probably going to be special. Um, and yeah. And then, last but not least, I'm getting distracted. I keep you know, forgetting to showcase the team. Man, there's there's everybody right there. Um, last but not least, we've got Mandingo, also known as Snorlax. Um, I saw a sh side note. I saw a shirt yesterday that said uh, "Just Do It Later," and it had the Nike symbol with Snorlax just kind of passed out on the swoosh. And I thought that was cool as hell. Uh, I almost bought it. It was like 14 bucks. I I almost like just uh, you know, reflex bought it, but, um, here we are, so, Starlax is gonna run the Figgy Berry with the Gluttony ability to proc that at 50% HP, and then we're gonna run Belly Drum, Protect, Facade, and Brick Break, um, 244 HP EVs, 12 attack, and 252 defense with a relaxed nature, uh, I really wanna buff the defense stat as much as I can, because that's, it's one stat that's really lacking, uh, while also maxing its bulk. I don't really care too much about investing in the attack this week just because <laughs> I mean, he's got such a good smile. Um, I really don't care about investing in the attack at all this week just because you know, we're running Belly Drum. So uh, if I do happen to get that off, its attack is already going to be sky high, so I want to really max maximize its bulk. Um, facade, you know, it does enough um, to kind of cut and get the KOs and I need it to. Uh, and then there's the off chance that like, they could bring Will-O-Wisp um, or Thunder Wave or something like that, and it'll do even more. Um, Brick Rake is there in case they want to run screens, or, um, you know, it's super effective into some of his, uh, you know, or not super effective, but, like, neutral into, like, their NDD, uh, which I'll be going for Facade there anyway. Um, you know, their Archaeops, uh, if they uh, go for Ditto, and they transform into Snorlax, or Heatran, or Guzzlord, you know, Brick Rake will hit those as well. Um, Again, if they set up screens, it'll get rid of those. It's super effective into their Berserker, and then, you know, Facade just kind of hits everything else for for amazing damage. So, um, I've kind of got a couple of designated leads here. I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lead uh, Rillaboom Claydol for game one, and just kind of see what happens. Um, you know, get the Trick Room up, and then, you know, or Fake Out, and get the Trick Room up, and then, you know, go from there. And then, uh, hopefully Rillaboom is slower than the Indeedee. Uh, that'd be great. It'll kind of open up a lot of doors there. And then, um, I think for game two, you know, hopefully we win game one, but then for game two, um, I think, you know, one, if we lose game one, desperate times call for desperate measures, uh, or if we win game one, you know, hey, let's have some fun. Hopefully this, maybe this will work <laughs> and it'll be fun to showcase. Um, I'm going to lead Comfy and Guzzlord and roll out the choice scarf after you set. So, uh, that's the team. And, uh, I will uh, connect with Lucian in a little bit here, and we'll get the battle rolling. All right, here we are. Playing against Lucian. Uh, let's see here. 
Double battle, battle tower rules. I think that's right. Here's our party. Alright, let's let the game begin. Good luck, have fun, buddy. I think this is gonna be a fun game. A little bit nervous because of some of the stuff that I brought. I think it's either going to be really great or it's going to flop. <laughs> I brought Ndidi, Togekiss, Seismitoad, Mew, Thunderous, and they did bring the Ditto. All right, so I think, like I said, Rillaboom into Guzzlord seems pretty f safe. After that, I kind of like just going Snorlax and Heatran. And just kind of see how that does game one. <coughs> you know. I recorded just a little bit ago, like the, the team builder. Um, I already forgot what I said my first designated lead was. <laughs> uh, let's see here. It was... I think it was Real Boom Claydol. Yeah, it was Real Boom Claydol. I already forgot what it clicked. <laughs> oh, the jitters are getting to me. What you got for me, brother? Togekiss and Mew. This was not either of my designated leads. <laughs> it's funny. Alright, but you know, it works out, so. We're gonna fake out the Togekiss. Um, either way, if they bring in the NDD, it's not going to do anything um, because it's flying, it's not affected by the psychic like, terrain, so priority is still going to hit it, and then we're just going to knock off the Mew. They go out to the Indeedy, that's fine. The only thing that would suck is if they protect the Mew. They did not. They went for the Dazzling Gleam. And Daddy eats it. And rocks the Mew in return. Alright, so. Mew's got Dazzling Gleam. And Guzzlord KO's Mew. Alright. One down, three to go. Alright, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go for a U-turn on the Ndidi. And we're going to wide guard with Guzzlord. Catch him off guard a little bit. Because I think he's just going to go for the Dazzling Gleam on Togekiss. And right now I feel really good about where Heatrain is. Um, in regards to this matchup. Yeah, you can't touch me. <laughs> And you turn. Let's see how much this does. That's a pretty hefty chunk. I like that. I wonder if they went for the expanding force or or something like that too. Um, all right, get in here. Heat train. Or sorry, handicap. 
Show them what you got. Yeah, they went for, you went for the double dazzling gleam. All right, so uh, a free double switch there. I like it. So um, let's see here. What do I want to do? I think just go for the flash cannon on the Togekiss. And I can't imagine him going for the dazzling gleam again. Part of me wants to just knock off into the Ndidi. That's pretty aggressive, though. Oh, man. You know what? I think for this first game, I'm just going to go for Wide Guard again. Because um, neither of them can really touch the Guzzlord. Um, you know, Mew has... Or, I mean, uh, Togekiss has Aura Sphere, so that's a little bit threatening. Okay, I'm glad I did that, then. Um, so just keep that in mind. So, indeed, he has... Follow me. Alright, now we're in a position where I'm going to go for the uh, Heat Wave to get a little more chip here. Or at least to to guarantee a kill on the DD and chip the Togekiss a little bit. And we're just going to Wide Guard again because uh, it doesn't look like his Togekiss can really touch Guzzlord at all right now. for the air slash this time. Daddy avoided the attack, but um, all I would have done is chipped a little bit. So he's got air slash as well. Seismitoad is the other. Okay. So I don't think... Hmm. Hmm. I really want to just go into the poopity scoop a little bit here. However, yeah, you know, let's just go out to poopity scoop here. And I think he's he's probably given up on the uh, the dazzling gleam. Hopefully, so we're gonna knock out the seismic to go for the knockout there. Uh, if I'm able to get that, then the combination of Snorlax and Heat Train just kind of dominate the uh, um, Togekiss. Oh, by the way. He trained KO the NDD. Oh, he went for it that time. Okay. And and it is special seismitoad. Good to know. All right, so we can just bring the handicap back out. And I think right now we're we're pretty safe to just you know go for the uh, um, grassy glide and flash cannon uh, and just kind of bypass the fake out um, you know pleasantries. So the fact that he's special size with Toad kind of makes the Grassy Glide, you know, not really do anything for my Heat Train here. Um, okay, they are Sash size with Toad. Good to know. And that's annoying that their Togekiss takes out the Rillaboom. And their Seismitoad KO's Heat Train. Alright. You know, if I would have just stuck with the. Um, if I would have stuck with the. 
the wide guard, Togekiss would have been like non-threatening at all. Um, all right. So how do we want to do this here? I think. How much does the facade do to the Togekiss? Um, bring it down to level 50 here. Facade isn't going to do much. I think I've got to go for the uh, facade into Seismitoad. Hopefully this thing doesn't like flinch me to death here. That would be super no Yeah, it's going to happen. That's what's going to happen here. Alright. That's fine. Really annoying, but that's, that's fine. I'm going to eat my berry. I see you know anything about Togekiss, like it just kind of takes the game out of your control. Um, the sixty percent chance to flinch is just <laughs> really overpowered, and I think that's going to be the game. So, uh, good game, um, good job, Lucian, setting me back my first loss. I think we we had the right stuff. Just didn't execute it properly. Maybe got a little bit cocky. Uh, taking my mind off of the wide guard there. Oh, what do I want to do next? Um, you know, if I set up Trick Room, it makes my life a lot easier. Uh, sure, I'll take his, his lead card. Why not? I think I'm going to lead with the... Oh shoot, I totally forgot. I think it was Seismitoad that KO'd my Snorlax. Alright. So now I think I'm going to lead off with. I wish I would have looked to see what Mew's item was. Um, I wasn't paying that much attention with that. So I think this game, I want to lead Rillaboom Claydol and get Trick Room set up. I think that'll help me a lot. Uh, Claydol should be able to um, provide quite a bit of pressure there. Uh, especially on the Togekiss and you know, uh, everything else that's there. Um, Rillaboom is still good into the Claydol, or into the Seismitoad. Um, I think Guzzlord is still like, the best means of offense that I have, and then uh, Heatrain is phenomenal. Um, to get rid of the uh, Togekiss. So we'll, we'll change it up slightly. We'll leave Snorlax at home, bring Claydol. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the same four. Uh, I don't... I'd be... I feel like if I were them, I'd be hard-pressed to bring the Thunderous at all, just because... Uh, you know, I didn't bring the Luxray, and it doesn't, like, it doesn't do that great, and, like, unless they brought, like, the specific, like, the correct set, uh, maybe they just didn't bring the, the right coverage uh, on a Defiant Thunderous. Like, I feel like flying, electric, and fighting kind of destroys my team, <laughs> or, like, dark, like, if it was a Solfest Thunderous with Defiant, like, knock off, brick break, um, and fly and thunderbolt. That'd be rough. But all right, let's see if we can pull it back. Got some good information from game one. Uh, didn't get get as much information as I wanted. Thunderous and Togekiss. All right. Let's see here. The Thunderous is probably the most threatening here. Um, 
I mean, I mean it's tough because they're both threatening. Um, but the taunt could really shut down the clade also. We're going to fake out the Thunderous and go for a trick room here. Some nice damage there. Goes for Air Slash on the Rillaboom. Rillaboom takes it nicely. Here goes the Trick Room. Alright. So now... I think I'm just going to switch right out to the Heat Train because I have no reason to really attack otherwise. Um, well... What if they switch their Seismitoid in on something, right? I can't see... No, they're not going to do that with the Rillaboom. Um, yeah, let's just go right out into the Heat Train here. And then go for an Ice Beam into the Thunderous. See what happens. Citrus berry. Yep, okay. Goes for super power. Oh man, what a read. Wow, okay. All right. That was, that was quite the read, man. Props to you. So, we're just gonna go the spread heat wave and ice beam the thunderous. Oh, it'd be nice if they switch in the size of toad. Nice. Hopefully break that, that sash. Very impulse the clay doll. All right. So that was a pretty hefty chunk there. Uh, Heat wave might take it out yet, and it does. All right. So I know he's prankster. He's got eerie impulse. Um, he train. Okay, that was the thunders. Brings out the Ndidi. Alright, how do I want to do this? Let's just switch Heat Train out to I could use Protect. Um let's switch Heat Train out into the Poopity Scoop here. And then go for the Earth Power. That your impulse is annoying right now, um, and I don't really have a way to taunt the NDD, so I'm hoping that they target and take down the clade all this turn. Used Earth Power. That's me. Okay. Used muddy water. Nice, okay. This is actually perfect. Because uh, Poopity Scoop is still in there. And then uh, this allows me to get Guzzlord in there. Under Trick Room. And then uh, Guzzlord can come in, take care of the NDD here. We did use Muddy Water, okay. And they're indeed 
Sazato took out the Clado. Alright, so here's what I'm going to do this turn. I want to fake out the Seismitoad and then go for the knockoff. And I believe, the way I believe this works is that fake out goes before follow me. It should. Um, by the way, I think we're, f we're slower than the Adidi in Trick Room here anyway. I just protect, which that's just as fine. Honestly, that's just as well here. Um, which means Guzzlord's gonna get the, the KO here on the... Oh, the Indeedee went faster. Okay. Guzzlord still takes it out, though. Gets that beast boost. <laughs> So now it comes down to set us against Seismitoad and Togekiss. So I think they'd have to go for like a uh, a double protect here on the Seismitoad. And I don't really have any other great plays against like if they pull that off. So I'm just going to lean into it and go with the uh, Grassy Glide and Wide Guard. If they get it, well then I guess it's just not our week. Um, like, I think that's their only win, con win condition here, is getting the double protect on the Seismitoad, because that's the only thing that, that really takes care of our Heatrain, and Heatrain just walls their, their Togekiss for days. Oh, I forgot about that. I forgot about the follow me. Cheeky cheeky. Okay. Alright, so here's what we're gonna do. Oh, and now they got their sash back too. Oh. Well played, man. That was very nice. I don't know that I have an answer for that now. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I have one now. Um, but uh, we're gonna go for this anyway. We're gonna go for the grassy glide and heavy slam. Um, if they dazzling gleam, oh, okay. Actually, I think no. I still don't think it matters because they had their they they uh got their sash back. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I think we lose now, yeah. Well played, dude. Uh, yeah, good game. Good game uh, dang it, this sucks because now I, I talk so much trash this week. Um, yeah. I and Toga Kiss KOs Guzzlord. That, uh, that follow me getting their sash back was a great play. Uh, <laughs> I wish I would have uh, noticed that. Or, like, Kind of seen that coming. Um, I mean, it was kind of a ballsy play, but like they really didn't have anything else to lose there. I just gotta go for the heat wave and hope that they miss with their uh, seismic toads attack. That's my only chance now. But they will not. They will connect, and that is going to be game. So, hey, man, well played, Lucian. Uh, I can't even be mad <laughs> that that uh, that um, protecting your seismito, getting your sash back, and uh, you know, hitting the dazzling gleam, or, or you know, protecting your you know, just the turn where you protect with your seismito. I forget what else you did with your token gifts, but uh, that was a phenomenal play, and uh, yeah, you deserve to win that game clearly. Uh, you know, we'll have to save the, the after you tactics for another week. I just, I don't think that it really, you know, made much sense given uh, what they what they brought there. So, um, yeah, 
their the redirection is what made it tough to bring the after you. If they didn't have the redirection, I think it would have been a lot easier to kind of lean into that. Uh, but the fact that they didn't just made it really tough. Uh, maybe the trick scarf would have been, you know, something I should have gone for as well. You know. Um, yeah, that's it. Is what it is. Uh, well played, dude. And uh, we'll chalk it up to as a learning experience. You know, you you win some and you learn some, right? So uh, we are now three and one. Uh, lost not only our first but our second game of the season. Uh, and you know, we lost two games in this set. So uh, yeah, still on the top and uh, still trying to. Uh, make our way to playoffs so we'll see you next week hopefully we can rebound and uh, catch you next time